today I wanted to show you how to upgrade your battery on a bike like this. Now you might think this is fairly simple because you just need to go to the manufacturer and buy a bigger battery or one with a higher capacity, right? Wrong. You see, the Rad Power Bike is one bike of many that uses a proprietary battery. That means that you cannot go buy another one of these unless you buy it specifically from Rad Power. This is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery, and they don't have a bigger option. You can't buy that cradle separately, and you can't buy another battery that will plug into it. And therein is the problem. You can't buy a generic high long style battery, the manufacturer of this case, and put it on this bike. So today I'm gonna to show you a few different ways that you can get around this problem. Now before we get into this video, I know that 85% or more of you are not subscribed to my channel. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit like. If you have any interest in electric bikes, you have no excuse not to hit that subscribe button. And as a plus, if you do hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below, I will make sure that somebody in the comments wins a free Bolton e-bikes t-shirt. So what are the reasons you would want to upgrade the battery in the first place? Well, we have the upgraded controller and display on this bike right now, and that means this bike is capable of way more power than stock. If we use more power, we're gonna use more battery. So there's two reasons, two reasons we would want to upgrade the battery. If we go to a bigger voltage, like a 52 volt, which this controller can handle, we can get a little bit more top speed. And if we go increase the amp hours or the overall capacity, we can get more range. So not only can we go a little bit faster, but we can go further than what this battery can currently do. So what are we gonna put on this bike? We are gonna put on a triangle battery, which is so named because it's shaped like a triangle. Now, how do we get this triangular shaped battery to fit on here and mount? As you can see, there's no mounting plates or anything that come with a battery this large. That's okay because a triangle shaped battery comes with a triangle shaped bag. So all we need to do is put the battery into this bag. It has a whole bunch of Velcro straps to keep it in there nice and tight. And then as you can see, this bag has straps all the way around on all three sides so we can tightly strap this onto the bike. And it's possible to make this look nice and neat. In fact, in some ways it makes the bike a little bit more stealthy. So some people may not even realize you have an electric bike once your battery is hidden inside of a bag like this. Now I did say the battery was proprietary and that causes one other problem, which is that the connector they use isn't a standard connector. This is a XT90 anti-spark connector on our triangle battery. I say anti-spark, you can see the, the little green part on here, that's what indicates the anti-spark function. Basically what this does is when you plug in a battery, sometimes you get a really big spark right there but because of the special design of this, it slows that process down a little bit so you get a little spark. Happen on 48 volt batteries or larger, and eventually that'll wear these connectors down. They'll start to turn black. They don't connect as well. So this is an ideal connector. The controller, of course, and the battery that are on the bike don't use this. They use something that looks like this. So we have a handy little adapter to make this entire thing plug and play. Now, if you don't have a Rad Power bike, that's okay because the same process can be used on other e-bikes. If you have another brand of electric bike that has what appears to be a unique battery, or maybe it's not that unique and they just charge a ton of money for it, this is a way to easily replace just about any bike. And at most, you would have to change the battery connector. So first things first, we need to get this battery off. Just need to unlock it. Okay, now that we've got the battery off, we need to pull off this cradle right here. 
So we've just got three bolts right there. We're going to pop that off and put our, start putting our bag into place. Now, while I'm getting these bolts out, there's one other thing I should mention. What if you have a cradle or a battery design where it's somewhat integrated into the bike, but you still want a spare battery that doesn't cost as much as whatever came on the bike? Well, there's still an option, and that option is to mount it somewhere else. Now, you might be wondering, how could I mount a battery somewhere else and still have it work on the bike? And the answer to that is simple. And I actually have a product that works very well for this. We are totally out of stock at the moment, but I've got more on the way. And it is a parallel battery connector. So there's two different ways you could do this. If you're using the same voltage of battery, so let's say the stock battery that we pulled off is 48 volts, and the new battery, say we're gonna mount it on a rear rack on the back, say that's also 48 volts, we could have a single connector going from our controller to both batteries. Now a standard parallel connector means you could, yes, use both batteries, but you'd have to monitor them both carefully, make sure they're both equally charged, because if you were to plug both batteries in at the same time and one was fully charged and one was low, the voltage is gonna very quickly cause a rush of current to go from one battery to the other, potentially damaging both of them, and we definitely don't want that. So this special parallel connector that I've got actually accounts for that and corrects it. Basically, it's a special circuit that's built into it, so it prevents that rush of current from happening from one battery to the other. So you can use two same voltage batteries, and they can be different amperages, so they can be different capacities. As long as they're the same voltage, you can use them both interchangeably, and it doesn't even matter which one is charged more than the other. It will drain either from both evenly, or it will drain from the fullest battery first until it reaches the level of the second battery, in which case it will drain both. Okay, we've got the three bolts off of our cradle. Now we have a couple of zip ties right here. We're just gonna clip that zip tie off and then unplug this cradle and get it totally off the bike. Now that the stock cradle is removed, we have two options for this piece and the stock battery. Uh, the batteries has, have some reasonable second-hand value. So if you don't intend on using this or the battery, I would recommend selling them to someone else who needs it. But you don't have to do that. Let's say I want to put not only our triangle battery right in the middle, but I want to keep this as a spare. What I would do if you have a rear rack, or you can put one on, mount the cradle to the rear rack. Of course, mount your battery to it. Now you can mount this right about here. Obviously not gonna be right on the tire. So if this is sitting on the rear rack, once again, this is a 48 volt battery. The one we're putting in here is a 52 volt, so we can't plug these in at the same time. So what you can do is leave your adapter, leave this somewhere that it's fairly accessible along with the plug on your motor controller. And what you could do is run off of your 52 volt battery. If it dies, then you can simply unplug that connector, move it over to your original battery, your stock battery, and plug that one in and keep running. You just don't wanna plug two different voltages in at the same time. Now, if you upgrade to a 48 volt here and a 48 volt here, that's where you can use that parallel connector I talked about, and it will drain from both batteries. You can charge them both up, pop them both on, or you could put just the back battery or just the center battery, so you have a lot of flexibility. You could take one battery for a short ride. You could take them both if you know you're gonna go for a longer ride. Now, as a helpful tip, if you are running two batteries, my personal preference is to always run the smaller capacity battery first because if that one dies, you know you have more than enough juice to get home. If you do the opposite, you better make sure you pedal harder on the way back. Now, all of these bags are gonna have a zipper. They might vary as to which side the zipper is on. Maybe you get a fancy bag that has a zipper on both sides, but basically, we're just going to take this bag and strap it to the frame. Now, I find it a little bit easier if you take the triangle battery and put it in the bag and kind of get it situated first. And that way you have the battery all tucked in there nice and neat. 
and then slip it onto the bike. So inside the bag, to accommodate for different sizes of batteries, you can see we have these super long Velcro strips. And they're nice and tough. These things are not gonna let go. You do not have to worry about this going anywhere. We've got the battery Velcroed inside the bag, and you can see there's actually a hole at the back for our cable to fish through to go to the controller. So we fish that through there. We're gonna leave our charge port up near the front so it's easily accessible when we wanna charge this up. And then we're gonna go ahead and zip this bag up. Now here's what it looks like zipped up. Once again, if we wanna access the charge port, we just need to unzip that top portion, pop that out or plug our charger in. Now let's get this on the bike. These Velcro straps are probably gonna be way longer than they need to be for your bike, but they're done longer on purpose so they can fit a variety of frame styles. So after you get this situated on the bike, you can always trim these up a little bit with some scissors. Now this battery is a very tight fit. Once again, this is the 52 volt 20 amp hour. So you can see why the larger 52 volt 30 amp hour battery we have will not fit on the Rad Rover bike. So we've got our battery positioned right here. Now we can take our Velcro straps and you can see how this is a little bit longer than it needs to be. So we could trim that shorter. This may or may not be the permanent home for this battery. So I'm not gonna cut these. I'm gonna leave some extra room and just tuck that underneath in case we decide to move this battery to another bike. Now I'm gonna bring the camera around to this side. You can see I've still got uh, some extra Velcro we can snip off there. But here's the battery cable for our big triangle battery. It's exiting out of that hole right on the back corner that I showed you earlier. Now this is where the battery connector that's on the bike is currently different. So if you're doing this DIY, you would have to take one of those connectors and cut and solder a new one because obviously those don't match at all. But that's not a problem because we can take our adapter here. We're gonna plug in the black end first because we have this nice anti-spark function on the yellow connector, we're gonna use it. So we've got our black connector in and then we're just gonna go ahead and plug in our yellow one right here. And once you're plugged in there, I would go ahead and turn on your bike and verify everything's working. And as long as everything powers on and looks good, at that point, I would go ahead and zip tie this, any extra cable up. The other option is instead of zip tying, what you could do is just take the excess and run it underneath the Velcro straps right here. That'll keep it nice and tight to the frame. And then any excess cable, you can actually fish back through and put it inside the bag. And on this, there's actually enough slack that we could get this yellow connector inside the bag, have it protected in there, and then we'd be all done. So there you go. You can see that's not very difficult at all. It's actually very easy to do. And we have upgraded that bike in just a few minutes from the stock 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery to a 52 volt, 20 amp hour. So 48 volts times 14 amp hours, that's 672 watt hours for the stock battery that we removed. And then 52 volts, 20 amp hours, that's just over one kilowatt hour of battery. So it's a substantial improvement. Because we increase voltage, we're gonna see a slight bump in top speed, and then we're gonna see a huge improvement in our overall range. Now, what about cost? What does it cost for a battery like this? Well, this particular one I used in the video, of course, is for sale at boltonebikes.com. It's $529, and that is shipped anywhere in the continental US. How does that compare to other battery prices? This is the stock battery that we pulled off. If you wanna buy one of these from Rad Power, that's $550. So you can see how going to a more generic style of battery can save you some money because we're getting a much bigger battery for less than the price of this one. You could probably sell this one secondhand for four to 500 and buy this one for just a little bit more. Or better yet, like I said, you hang on to this one, put it on a back rack and you can still 
use it. You just have to unplug and plug your connectors and swap them, which is not hard to do at all. Now, if you have any questions about this process, of course, please leave a comment below. Like I said, I would give away a free Bolton e-bikes t-shirt to somebody in the comments. And of course, if you want to buy shirts, there's always a link in the description where you can check out any of the Bolton e-bike shirts. These are shirts that I've designed myself and I just like to wear them in my videos because I think they're cool. Now make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, like I said, it helps the YouTube algorithm, makes YouTube feel better, makes me feel better, and it'll make you feel better. Thanks again for watching. I hope this was a helpful tip and helps people to realize that some upgrades are really not hard to do at all and anyone can do this. I hope that's what I can really show people that are watching my channel is that it's not hard to work on your own electric bike, no matter what brand you have, and making upgrades can be really easy.